I'll be sharing tips from a spiritual place of how to be a better parent. It's not all about being there every day for your kids. It is. I shouldn't say it that way. It is about being there for your kids every day. But how that looks is different than how most people might see it. A spiritual parent cares about the wellness of their children, their mental and spiritual side. Like, what do they want for their life? Like, how do you get your children out of negative thoughts and beliefs that they picked up from other people in this world and change them into something positive? It's not about co-parenting or like a, being a hover parent. It's about creating independent individuals that have goals and dreams just like you. I'm not going out with my kids all the time. Yes, I run them to school and I pick them up. But on the weekends, I have a little bit of help. I have a grandpa figure that comes into my life and their life and will take them to go have fun out into the 3D world where mommy as a spiritual woman can't always be. It's too overwhelming for me. It's not overwhelming for them. They're fine. They want to go. So Grampy covers that, takes them out, brings that fun into their life. I bring something different into my children's life. I show them how it is to wake up every day, to be a responsible parent, to have hope in my heart that everything will get better and that we can all do this together, all four of my children. I'm a supportive parent, a loving, nurturing, caring parent to all of them, including my adult son, who's 23. Well, the conversations that you have with your adult children, especially when they're living with you, are completely different. Those conversations can get really messy, especially when they're like 23 years old and they're male and they wanna be the man of the house Oh, we can get into some, some debates. I have to set aside time for him to explain what mommy's doing every day. And even though it doesn't look like work to him, mommy's on a different path than him. This is what I'm doing. This is why I'm doing it. This is how I'm doing it. That's what I show him. So with him, I have to set aside some time where he comes and he sits in the king's chair and he learns about what I'm doing. I find that sitting out on the balcony, it's not the right energy. That's when I want to kind of be alone. I have a 15 year old. He's in high school. I placed him here in Tucson, Arizona three years ago so that he could go to a math and science school. I wanted to homeschool my kids. I did homeschool my kids, but it got to the point where I couldn't because I had to work full time as a widowed parent. And so I'm working 16 hours a day. But their education was still important, especially his because he was 13 years old and he was ready to go into junior high. I'm so proud of him. And he was an honor roll student last year. He's a very positive kid. He doesn't need a lot of input from me. But when we drive to school, we talk. When I pick him up from school, we talk. We get a few minutes to talk when he's in the front seat of my truck. Maybe 20 minutes some days, maybe only five minutes. My youngest daughter is my angel. Her name is Serafina. She is sensitive. She doesn't really like being around people. She is going to school for the first time. She's in first grade. She goes to a Montessori school even though I wanted to teach her at home and I could teach that one at home. She's very open to it and would love to be around mommy all the time. But I wanted her to kind of get out into the 3D world and meet some other people and maybe make a friend. She has one or two friends, but she's bored with school. And so I have to keep that in mind. This is the direction that we chose to put her in school. She wanted to go to school, so we're trying it right now. My other daughter is 10. She's a little wild child, super creative, artistic, loves people, loves making friends, gives out gifts to make friends. She has a friend group at school and that's what makes her like going to school. 
she doesn't really care about the math and all the the work that she has to do. She doesn't really want to be doing that, but she goes for her friends. And she's always saying, I've got two lunches and two recesses. And that's what makes her excited to go to school. My 10 year old daughter, Anastasia, she's my princess. She's going to be working with me on some photo shoots for the Pure Love Foundation. They're dark. She likes all that dark stuff. She likes witches and demons and devils. And hey, part of me does too. She's very witchy. She could be a dark witch if I don't direct her and guide her in the right way. So we're working on that together and we're going to have those spiritual conversations about what is a demon and a devil. What is devil energy? We don't go to church, so we're not having those kind of Christian religious conversations, but it's still all the same. We're having the spiritual conversation of what is this energy? Who do we know that's in this energy? Who do we want to stay away from? There's no casting spells on anybody. We do not do that. I am a queen of light. I'm a princess here. As a mom, I'm a princess. But in our kingdom, we shine light on the darkness. We do not cast darkness on others. We're truth speakers and we will call out the truth. 